morning, everybody. Welcome to another day of worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to welcome today to our pulpit uh, Commission Pastor uh, Bruce Jordan. Bruce is not only the husband of our former um, <coughs> session moderator, Reverend Dr. Martha Jordan, but he is also um, very, he wears a lot of hats at Presbyterian. He's our uh, office administrator and also financial secretary. And our financial secretary. <coughs> so he comes from a lot of different uh, ways that uh, we need to uh, look at the church, and he is um, doing his best to help us all support the Presbyterian and become integral members of the Presbyterian. And if you really like him, you're going to see him again, too, later this week. Nope, the last yeah. week. Last Sunday, this month. Uh, session will meet this Thursday at 7 p.m., and our session meetings are open, and we have a lot to discuss, including the thing that just won't go away is our pandemic, the way we treat our pandemic uh, right now and uh, with its new variant. Um, we'll probably have to change procedures again, um, but we will be discussing that in session and probably make some decisions. So um, you are welcome to join that at 7 o'clock. Um, I think the other announcements are self explanatory. Darts, what's uh, the there is a list back there for the uh, Welsh cookies that we're baking is September 23rd. Right, okay. The uh, Welsh cookie bake is coming up next month, but the order blanks are already there. And, uh, and workers. And yes, because we always need more workers. <laughs> As Donnie and I can uh, attest to that we were uh, putting first time last time, and uh, we had a very good time, but it was a learning experience. So. A little hot, right? Um, They've been doing it for a lot longer than we have, so <laughs> you relied on them for the guidance on that. Are there other announcements to bring us forward? Hearing none, let us come and focus our hearts and minds on the worship of God. Um.
join me in our call to worship responsive here in the bulletin. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, and his marvelous deeds among all people. For great is the Lord, and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Let us worship our Lord. <coughs> Please join me in our prayer of adoration. Almighty God, we are in awe of your magnificent power displayed through the entire universe. For through you all things were made, and all things have their being. We come before you with grateful thanks, and with hearts that long to adore you and worship only you. Lord, may we know the presence of the Holy Spirit here with us today. May we be open to your leading, sensitive to your speaking, and alert to your calling. Father, we invite the same power that was at work when Jesus was raised from the grave to be present with us here now. Lord, we declare that you are welcome here amongst us. Amen. And now our opening hymn, Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above, number 645.
and now sharing silently. Amen. Jesus came for us. He lived for us and died on the cross for us. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Amen. A responsive reading from First Chronicles. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. We thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. We thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. In your hand are power and might, and it is in your hand to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. Please join me in sharing this ancient profession of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, souls to you as we hear your word read from the Bible and proclaimed. Amen. Amen. First from the Old Testament, the 16th chapter of the book of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, 
they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall have meat, and in the morning you shall know you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost, was on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it is. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. And then from the book of John, the sixth chapter, So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. The feeding of the 5,000 had just happened. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Thanks be to God for the words of God. Amen. This morning's scripture lessons brought us two stories about bread. First, the reading from Exodus told the story of the Hebrews wandering in the wilderness and starting to get hungry, as the wilderness did not have much to eat. The second brings us Jesus telling his followers, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. In some ways, these are two sides of the same coin. The people of God have physical needs and complain to their Lord that he is not providing for them. But the Lord does provide and tries to help them see that their spiritual needs are more important than just the physical. Let's start with the Israelites wandering in the desert. They had finally escaped their slavery in Egypt and are now free. But they begin to see that their freedom is also creating problems like Where is our next meal to come from? They complain to Moses, who brings it to God. Good idea there. And God provides manna from heaven. But here is some interesting information. The manna is not actually a miraculous occurrence. In fact, it's something that happens naturally, even up to this day. There's a type of plant lice that punctures the fruit of the tamarisk tree and excretes a substance from this juice, a yellowish-white flake or ball. During the warmth of the day, it disintegrates, but it congeals once it's cold. It has a sweet taste and is rich in carbohydrates and sugar. Natives today still gather it and bake it into a bread that they call manna. So not only did God provide their need, 
He had already been doing it, and still does it today. The world was created good for us to live in and enjoy, and right from the beginning there were good things to eat and drink. And it's kind of important that it be a natural solution to the people's problem, because God wants them to see that he has created a world that is good for them and will provide. If what God provided in the wilderness was simply miraculous, platters of cooked food piled high appearing before them, then the people of God will only look for God's handiwork in things that are miraculous. But God provides for us every day, and we need to recognize that. Now let's turn to the passage from John. Just before today's lesson is the story of the feeding of the 5,000. There's a lot of bread in that one. And so when Jesus tries to get away from the crowd for some much needed rest, they seek him out again. He has to tell them, you're looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food which perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life. Just as God worried that if the manna in the desert was seen as heavenly, the Israelites would not learn that they can provide for themselves with all the things that God has created here on earth, Jesus worried that the people would see him as simply a worker of physical miracles, walking on water, healing the sick, providing abundant food. He wanted them to realize that life is more than eating, that what they needed was more than the bread which Moses could give them, but rather the spiritual bread of life, which only he could provide. And that if they truly changed their lives and followed him, they would have eternal life. They would never hunger nor thirst. The eternal life that Jesus wanted to call their attention to is really the whole focus of the Gospel of John. Yes, Jesus performs miracles, can raise the dead, heal the sick, feed the people. But the goal is to draw the people to hear his message. And that message is that to gain eternal life, we have to try to live our lives here on earth following his commandment. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Now, I have a story. It's a rather long story, but I'm going to share it. It's about another bread-like food, donuts. <laughs> it's called the price of donuts. There was a certain professor of religion named Dr. Christensen who taught at a small college in the western United States. Dr. Christensen taught the required survey course in Christianity at this particular institution. Every student was required to take this course his or her freshman year, regardless of what they were majoring in. Although Dr. Christensen tried hard to communicate the essence of the gospel in his class, he found that most of his students looked upon the course as nothing but required drudgery. Despite his best efforts, most students refused to take Christianity seriously. This year, Dr. Christensen had a special student named Steve. Steve was just a freshman, but he was studying with the intent of going on to seminary for ministry. Steve was popular, he was well-liked, and he was an imposing physical specimen as well. He was now the starting center on the school football team and the best student in the professor's class. One day, Dr. Christensen asked Steve to stay after class so he could talk with him. How many push-ups can you do? Steve said, well, I do about 200 every night. 200? That's pretty good, Steve, Dr. Christensen said. Do you think you could do 300? Steve replied, I don't know. I've never done 300 at a time. You think you could, asked Dr. Christensen. Well, I can try, said Steve. Can you do 300 in sets of 10? I have a class project in mind, and I need you to do about 300 push-ups in sets of 10 for it to work. Can you do it? I need you to tell me you can do it, said the professor. Steve said, well, I think I can. Yeah, I can do it. Dr. Christensen said, good. I need you to do this on Friday. Let me explain what I have in mind. 
Friday came, and Steve got to class early and sat in the front of the room. When class started, the professor pulled out a big box of donuts. These weren't just your regular everyday Krispy Kremes. They were the extra fancy big kind with cream centers and frosting all over. Everyone was very excited. It was Friday, last class of the day, and they were going to get an early start on the weekend with a party in Dr. Christensen's class. Dr. Christensen went to the first girl in the first row and said, Cynthia, do you want to have one of these donuts? Cynthia said, yes. Dr. Christensen turned to Steve and asked, Steve, would you do 10 push-ups so that Cynthia can have a donut? Sure. Steve jumped down from his desk to do a quick 10. Then Steve sat back down at his desk. Dr. Christensen put a donut on Cynthia's desk. Dr. Christensen then went to Joe, the next person, and said, Joe, do you want a donut? Joe said, yes. Dr. Christensen asked, Steve, would you do 10 push-ups so Joe can have a donut? Steve did 10 push-ups. Joe got a donut. And so it went down the first aisle. Steve did 10 push-ups for every person before they got their donut. <coughs> and down the second aisle, so Dr. Christensen came to Scott. Scott was on the basketball team and is in good, as good condition as Steve. He was also very popular and never lacking for female companionship. When the professor asked Scott, do you want a donut? His reply was, well, can I do my own push-ups? Dr. Christensen said, no, Steve has to do them. Then Scott said, well, I don't want one then. Dr. Christensen shrugged, turned to Steve and asked, Steve, will you do 10 push-ups so Scott can have a donut he doesn't want? <laughs> With perfect obedience, Steve started to do the 10 push-ups. Scott said, hey, I said I didn't want one. Dr. Christensen said, look, this is my classroom, my class, my desks. These are my donuts. Leave it on the desk if you don't want it. And he put a, a donut on Scott's desk. Now, by this time, Steve had begun to slow down a little. <laughs> he just stayed on the floor between sets because it was taking too much effort to get it up and down every time. You could start to see a little perspiration coming out around his brow. Dr. Christensen started down the third row. Now the students were beginning to get a little angry. Dr. Christensen asked Jenny, Jenny, do you want a donut? Sternly, Jenny said, no. Then Dr. Christensen asked Steve, Steve, will you do 10 more push-ups so Jenny can have a donut she doesn't want? Steve did 10. Jenny got a donut. By now, a growing sense of uneasiness filled the room. The students were beginning to say no, and there were all these uneaten donuts on the desks. Steve also had to really put forth a lot of extra effort to get these push-ups done for each donut. There began to be a small pool of sweat on the floor beneath his face. His arms and brow were beginning to get red because of the physical effort involved. Dr. Christensen started down the fourth row. During his class, however, some students from other classes had wandered in and sat down on the steps along the radiators that ran down the sides of the room. When the professor realized this, he did a quick count and saw that there were now 34 students in the room, and he started to worry whether Steve would be able to make it. Dr. Christensen went on to the next person, then the next, then the next. Near the end of that row, Steve was really having a rough time. He was taking a lot more time to complete each set. A few moments later, Jason, a recent transfer student, came to the room and was about to come in when all the students yelled in one voice, No! Don't come in! Stay out! <laughs> Jason didn't know what was going on. Steve lifted up his head, and he said, no, let him come. Professor Christensen said, you realize that if Jason comes in, you'll have to do 10 push-ups for him. And Steve said, yes, let him come in. Give him a donut. Dr. Christensen said, OK, Steve. I'll let you get Jason's out of the way right now. Jason, do you want a donut? Jason, new to the room, hardly knew what was going on. He said, yes, give me a donut. Steve, will you do 10 push-ups so that Jason can have a donut? Steve did 10 push-ups very slowly and with great effort. 
Jason, bewildered, was handed a donut and sat down. Dr. Christensen finished the fourth row, then started on those visitors seated by the heaters. Steve's arms were now shaking with each push-up in a struggle to lift himself against the force of gravity. Sweat was profusely dropping off of his face, and by this time there was no sound except his heavy breathing, and there was not a dry eye in the room. The very last two students in the room, room were two young women, both cheerleaders, both very popular. Dr. Christensen went to Linda, the second to last, and asked, Linda, do you want a donut? And Linda said, no, thank you. Professor Christensen quietly asked, Steve, will you do 10 push-ups so that Linda can have a donut she doesn't want? Grunting from the effort, Steve did 10 very slow push-ups for Linda. Then Dr. Christensen turned to the last girl, Susan. Susan, do you want a donut? Susan, with tears flowing down her face, began to cry. Dr. Christensen, why can't I help him? Dr. Christensen, with tears of his own, said, No, Steve has to do it alone. I have given him this task, and he is in charge of seeing that everyone has an opportunity for a donut, whether they want it or not. When I decided to have a party this last day of class, I looked at my grade book. Steve is the only student with a perfect grade. Everyone else has failed a test, skipped a class, or offered me inferior work. Steve told me that when a player messes up in football practice, he must do push-ups. I told Steve that none of you could come to my party unless he paid the price by doing your push-ups. He and I made a deal for your sakes. Steve, would you do 10 push-ups so Susan can have a donut? As Steve very slowly finished his last push-up, with the understanding that he had accomplished all that was required of him, having done 350 push-ups, his arms buckled beneath him, and he fell to the floor. Dr. Christensen turned to the room and said, And so it was that our Savior, Jesus Christ, on the cross, pled to the Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. With the understanding that he had done everything that was required of him, he yielded up his life. And like some of those in this room, many, many of us leave the gift on the desk, uneaten. Two students helped Steve up off the floor and to a seat, physically exhausted but wearing a thin smile. Well done, good and faithful servant said the professor, adding, not all sermons are preached in words. Turning to his class, the professor said, my wish is that you might understand and fully comprehend all the riches of grace and mercy that have been given to you through the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for us all, now and forever. Whether or not we choose to accept his gift to us, the price has been paid. Wouldn't you be foolish and ungrateful to leave it laying on the desk? So Jesus is the donut of life, who is given to us by God for our salvation. And even when we may lack for some of our physical needs and suffer from pain, illness, hunger, sin, thirst, anxiety, or stress, he is always there for us, able to share or even carry the load Unlike the Israelites in the desert, or the crowd chasing after Jesus by the lakeside, we have the opportunity to be grateful, strive to live our lives in a Christ-like way, and share this good news with the world. Amen.
Dalton Rissinger and Mike Rissinger are having a birthday, and Erica Vargas. So we're, we're sending long-range birthday greetings to all these people. Are there other joys we're going to look at this morning? Hearing none, let us concentrate on concerns. We have a prayer list this morning. Are there others we would like to add to the prayer list? Tina Gaffney. What? Tina Gaffney. Tina Gaffney. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ you taught us to pray and to offer our petitions to you in his name. Guide us by your Holy Spirit, that our prayers for others may serve your will and show your steadfast love. Hear us as we pray for the world, for you made all things in your wisdom and in your love you save us. We pray for your whole creation. We ask you to overthrow evil powers and right what is wrong. Feed and satisfy those who hunger and thirst for justice. So that all your children may freely enjoy the earth you have made and joyfully sing your praise. We pray for your church, for you have called us to be the church of Jesus Christ. Keep us one in faith service, breaking bread together, and proclaiming the good news to the world, that all may believe you are love and turn to your ways to live in the light of your truth. We pray for peace, Lord, because you sent us a Savior, Jesus Christ, to break down the walls of hostility that divide us. Send peace on earth and put down greed and pride and anger, which turn our nations against nations. It turns races against races. Speed the day when wars will end and the whole world accepts your will and you rule. We even pray for our enemies as Jesus has taught us. We cannot love you unless we also love our neighbors. Remove hate and prejudice from us and from all people so that your children may be reconciled with those we fear or resent or those who threaten. And live together in your peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray for those who govern us, for you are sovereign over the nations. We pray you direct those who make and administer and judge our laws, our president, and others in authority among us, that they may be guided by your wisdom and lead us in the way of righteousness. We pray for the world leaders, Lord, for you are our eternal ruler and hope of all the earth. Give vision to those who govern countries that with goodwill and justice they may take down barriers and draw together one another in world in a new world of peace. Hear us as we pray for the sick, merciful God, for you bear the pain of the world. Look with compassion on those who are sick or live in fear or live with anxiety and worry, those facing medical procedures, Especially this morning, Lord, we lift up Lori Belinsky and Gary Blackledge, Bob Burton, Don Keynes, Frank and Pat Chiswick, and Alberta Evans, Jesse Fisher, Betty Franks, <coughs> Suzette Chavats, Chris Griffin, and Tina Gaffney, Sue Hine, Tom Holland, Marge Walker, Walt Kazan. Florence Leslewski, Gretchen and Les Martin, Wade Olandike, Carol Shogi, 
Neil Provenza, and Rebecca Rawson, Lisa Rissinger, and Dory Rogers, Grace Stampion, Carol and Alan Thomas, Yolanda Vargas, Andrea White, Mary Beth Yanishit. Lord, we ask you to cheer them by your word and bring healing as a sign of your grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, hear us as we pray for those who saw you. For you are our God of comfort. We ask you to stand with those who grieve and those who sorrow, that they may be sure that neither death nor life can, or things present or things to come can ever separate them from your love. Hear us as we pray for family and friends, and bless us, those we love, our friends and families that drawing close to you we may be drawn closer to each other. Mighty God, whose words we trust and whose spirit enables us to pray, accept our requests and further those which will bring about your purpose for the earth. Through Jesus Christ, who rules over all things and who taught us, even us, to pray to you and to enter into your presence in prayer, saying, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And the power, and the glory forever. <coughs> and now if you'll join me in singing you may stay seated with the middle hymn number 494 not what's written in the book hey, no Jesus thou joy of loving hearts
gifts from the abundance with which you have blessed us. Use them to further your work of the church and dedicate each of us in service to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us join in the closing hymn, number 65, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah.